After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the complexes having same chemical formula but different constitutional arrangement. Learn the types of constitutional isomerism in detail. Identify the number of isomers possible for the given empirical formula and evaluate the type of isomerism possible for the given empirical formula. Dear students, today we will discuss about the isomerism in inorganic compounds. We all know about the isomerism in organic compound. I think uh, all of you have been reading about the uh, isomerism in organic compound. But when we discuss about the isomerism in inorganic compound, it is something little unheard of, little un unexplored. And today, this is what we are going to discuss. So how to discuss about the isomerism? Uh, the compounds having identical empirical formula but differ in their physical and chemical properties. Such type of molecules are uh, called uh, uh, isomers and then this phenomena becomes the isomerism. Uh, typically isomerism is of uh, two types whether for organic compound or for inorganic compound. We can broadly divide into two uh, categories. The first one is uh, constitutional or structural isomerism and the second one is uh, stereoisomerism. Uh, as I said in the beginning that uh, isomerism in organic compound is well known. Now today we will discuss primarily about the isomerism in inorganic compound in general and uh, coordination compounds uh, complexes in particular. So again we can actually divide uh, uh, the isomerism in coordination complexes uh, that can again be divided into two categories. The first one is constitutional or structural isomerism which is something like uh, when the molecules have the same number and same type of atoms but they are arranged or they are attached in a different order. These isomerism have different chemical and physical properties and such an isomerism can be further divided into seven different categories. I will briefly first mention about, about the different uh, uh, categories of this type of isomerism. The first one is uh, uh, coordination isomerism, the second one is uh, polymerization isomerism. The third one is uh, uh, ionization isomerism. The fourth one is hydration isomerism. The fifth one is coordination position isomerism. The sixth one is linkage isomerism. And the seventh one and the last one is ligand isomerism. Now what we'll do, we'll take one of these categories uh, one by one and discuss in detail about uh, these type of isomerism. So let us start our discussion about coordination isomerism. Now how to define coordination isomerism? Coordination isomerism can be defined when different ligand sets in a complex cation or anion or we can always say the coordination isomerism is the one in which composition of the complex ion varies. So in a coordination isomer, the total ratio of ligand to metal remains the same but the ligand attached to a specific metal ion change changes. Example of a complex series of coordination isomers require at least two metal ions and sometimes more. We can take an example. Let us consider a solution which has two different types of species. The first one is cobalt 3 plus ion which is surrounded by six ammonia molecule and the second one is chromium 3 plus ion which is surrounded by six uh, cyanide ligands. So what actually happens in a solution we have two different type of species and the uh, it can be defined that this is a coordination isomer with a solution containing reversed arrangement of the ligands between two metal ions. For example, we started with the cobalt which was surrounded by six ammonia ion and the chromium which was surrounded by six cyanide ion. Now what will happen the isomer will have chromium surrounded by six ammonia ligand and the cobalt surrounded by six cyanide ligand. So this is something a very simple example. For example, you can take two species MA6 and MV6. So the first one is like you know when the metals are identical but if you make the metals different you can have M1A6 and M2B6. Then the isomers will have M1B6 and M2A6 and then you can have a various combination of such type. Now let us uh, discuss like this is a type of isomerism but how we can uh, separate such type of uh, uh, coordination isomers. So coordination isomers can be separated by a phenomena called ion exchange method. 
In this method, we can actually separate cations and anions easily. The solution of the complex is first passed through the cation exchange resin. So it is a special type of resin in which cationic part of the complex can be exchanged by a cation of the uh, different type. The second process is when you pass through the anion exchange resin. So what will happen? The anionic part of the, an uh, of the complex will be re replaced by a different anion. So this is the way we can actually separate uh, uh, the uh, complex, uh, both the complexes of, uh, of this uh, uh, isomer uh, by passing through the cation and anion exchange resins. So this gives you some idea about uh, uh, cation, uh, basically coordination isomerism and then you can have the visual which will give you a better idea about uh, this particular type of isomerism. So in this module, we are going to discuss about isomerism. Now when we talk about isomerism, everybody is aware about isomerism which, which is present in organic compound. But the isomerism or the understanding of isomerism in inorganic compound is quite limited. Today in this module we are going to discuss about inorganic isomerism, primarily isomerism which is present in the coordination complexes. So when we talk about uh, isomerism in coordination complexes, there are primarily two types of isomerism. One is structural isomerism and the second one is stereoisomerism. So what is structural isomerism? Stru structural isomerism is the one in which a metal ion is surrounded by ligands which are identical. It is only the arrangement of the ligands which is present on the metal which decide about the isomerism. Because of the structural iso isomerism, the two uh, compounds, they differ in their uh, uh, physical as well as chemical properties and these uh, uh, compounds are now called the isomers and the phenomena become isomerism. Now the, uh, we can take one example, for example a metal ion M is surrounded by four different ligands A, B, C, D. So we can tr talk about several isomers in which how, what is the orientation of a, B, C and D on a metal ion. In the second comp compound, that means the second isomer, we can start with B, C, A and D. So you can understand that all these arrangements will give rise to different type of isomers. The other type of isomerism is uh, 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 stereoisomerism. In the stereoisomerism, the type of ligand and the number of ligands are identical. It is only the spatial arrangement of the ligand which differs. For example, if a metal ion has two different type of ligands, for example A and A prime, B and B prime, then it is the arrangement, spatial arrangement of A versus A prime, B versus B prime which will be different and you cannot superimpose two of the stereoisomers on top, on top of each other and this type of, pheno of phenomena also give rise to different type of physical and chemical properties. Let us first learn about constitutional isomerism. Constitutional isomers are molecules that have the same number and types of atom which are attached in a different order. These isomers have very different physical and chemical properties. There are numerous forms of constitutional isomerism and these are hydrate isomerism, ligand isomerism, ionization isomerism, linkage isomerism, polymerization isomerism and coordination position isomerism. Let us now understand one by one about the different types of isomerisms. The first one is coordination isomerism. This type of isomerism is found in special cases where both the cation and anion part in the compounds are complexes. Now the metal center of both the cation and anion part can act as coordination center. Isomerism arises from a different distribution of ligand between the two metal ions. Thus the two isomers differ in distribution of ligands between the cation and the anion part of the compound. For example, the exchange of ammonia and cyanide ligands between cobalt 3 of the cationic complex and chromium 3 of the anionic complex form two coordination isomers. Another example of coordination isomerism is where different metal ions and different bidentate ligands are present in the complex. As you can see that the exchange of ethylene diamine and oxalate ligands is taking place between cobalt 3 of the cationic complex and chromium 3 anionic complex to form two coordination isomers. 
one more example of coordination isomerism is where identical metal ions but different monodentate ligands are there the example is here now exchange of ammonia and nitro ligands is taking place between cobalt 3 of the cationic complex and cobalt 3 anionic complex to form two coordination isomers last example of the coordination isomerism is where identical metal ions exist in different oxidation state but the ligands are different as you can see that platinum is showing oxidation state plus 4 in the cationic part and plus 2 in the anionic part of the complex now again exchange of ammonia and chlorine ligand form coordination isomers so after understanding the first part of the isomerism which was coordination isomerism now we move on to the second type of isomerism which is polymerization isomerism so how to define uh, polymerization isomerism this can be defined by uh, the isomers which have same empirical formula but different molar masses for example their order of uh, uh, aggregation is going to be different that means we can say that they'll have different degrees of aggregation as an example i can ask you to write down a uh, formula for four possible polymerization isomers of empirical formula of something called platinum two amine ligand and two chlorine ligand and which is uh, uh, in bracket it is whole n that means we have the liberty of changing this n to one two and three so we can uh, uh, keep on doing and so on so that means what will happen the first example will have one platinum two amine ligand and two chloride ligand the second example will have when n is equal to two will have two platinum ligand four amine ligand and four chlorine chloride ligand and so on so this will give rise to various combination so when we say n is equal to one that is going to be the first isomer that means one platinum two amine ligand and two chloride ligand when we change n is equal to two the molecular formula of the complex will be two platinum four amine and four chloride and the best possible structure for this complex is going to be platinum four amine ligand the uh, first bracket close second bracket we can have platinum and uh, four chloride ligand Similarly, for n is equal to 3, the molecular formula of the complex will be 3 platinum, 6 amine ligand, 6 chloride ligand. For this particular empirical formula or the molecular formula, we can write two possible uh, structures which will be uh, isomers to each other. For example, the first one will have uh, in the first bracket uh, platinum surrounded by 4 amine ligand, the bracket close. The second square bracket platinum surrounded by one amine ligand, three chloride ligand and the bracket close hold twice. And then we can further write the second isomer as uh, the square bracket platinum which is surrounded by three amine ligand, chloride, the bracket close and then we can write the platinum surrounded by four chloride ligand. So the four possible isomers for the same empirical formula become for n is equal to one, n is equal to two n is equal to 3 and n is equal to uh, 3 respectively for the first one platinum 2 amine ligand 2 chloride ligand for n is equal to 2 platinum 4 amine ligand bracket close uh, platinum 4 chloride ligand for n is equal to 2 and for n is equal to 3 will have platinum 4 amine ligand uh, bracket close platinum 1 amine ligand 3 chloride ligand a uh, whole square similarly for n is equal to 3 we can have platinum 3 amine ligand chloride ligand and platinum 4 chloride ligand so basically the polymerization uh, isomerism uh, differ how the uh, different uh, monomers are arranged in a single molecule that means how they differ in the uh, degree of aggregation polymerization isomerism it is the special case of coordination isomerism it arises when a series of compounds have the same empirical formula but different molecular masses for the salt although 
it is not the conventional polymerization which involves the linking together of a single repeating unit. An example of polymerization isomerism is provided by a series of salts in which both the cation and the anion contain cobalt 3 plus having the same empirical formula. The value of N can be greater than or equal to 1. Several compounds of empirical formula cobalt NH33 NO23 N where N can have the values 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now we move on to the uh, third isomerism which is ionization isomerism. Now how to define ionization isomerism? This type of isomerism occurs for the complexes having same empirical formula but they give different ions in the solution. Now this is important. Let me reiterate uh, it by explaining that this type of isomerism uh, can be defined for the compounds having same empirical formula but they give different ions in the solution. Now it will be clear if we take a, uh, an example. Let us take an example of a cobalt compound which is surrounded by 5 amine ligand, 1 chloride ligand and 1 bromide. So this compound is found in two different isomeric forms. The one isomer is in solution gives a white precipitate with after reaction with silver nitrate. On the other hand, the other isomer gives a yellow precipitate with silver nitrate. Now how to understand this particular reaction? So let us go in detail about this particular reaction. So the first isomer as I have just said that for this compound there are two possible isomers. So the first isomer that gives a white precipitate of silver chloride with silver nitrate in solution confirms the presence of chloride ion. So the structure of the uh, isomer becomes cobalt which is surrounded by 5 amine and 1 bromide and the chloride uh, atom is outside the complex sphere that means it is not coordinated to the chloride atom. So this particular chloride atom will immediately react with silver nitrate to give a white precipitate of silver chloride. So what will happen to the second isomer? Let us also discuss what actually happens uh, when the second isomer was reactive with silver nitrate. I told you that in this case uh, the, the precipitate was yellow in color which is nothing but silver bromide precipitate. So what actually happens when this isomer is reacted with silver nitrate, the precipitate is silver bromide which is yellow in color. So the structure of this isomer will be when the cobalt ion is surrounded by 5 amine ligand and 1 chloride, uh, chloride ligand that means the chloride is now coordinated to the cobalt and the bromide is the uh, anion which is outside the coordination sphere. So what will happen? Now this bromide will react with the silver nitrate to give a yellow precipitate of silver bromide. Now as an exercise, I could ask you to write the balance equation for the aforementioned observations. That means whatever the example which I have uh, uh, discussed, I can ask you to write all these observations in the form of balanced equation. Why don't you try that? I think uh, in the background you will be able to see these reactions. Now let us uh, discuss how we can find out the structure of a complex by making use of participation by some reagent and the weighing the precipitated salt. That means can we use this as a technique to uh, evaluate the structure of, a, of an unknown compound. Let us take one question in which we try to understand that if a solution of 2.665 gram of chromium chloride which has 6 associated water molecule is treated treated with a solution of silver nitrate V 
obtain two point eight seven gram of silver chloride. So the question is can we use this information to find out or to deduce the structure of complex. So let us go to the uh, next part and try to see what we can do. So first thing is to find out the molecular weight of weight of the starting material which is chromium chloride which has six water molecule so it is very simple we can take the weight of chromium which is 52 then we add three chloride atoms which is every chloride atom is 35.5 that has to be multiplied by three similarly we also add six water molecule which is going to be uh, 6 into 18. So when you did do this process, we get the molecular weight of chromium chloride 6 water as 266.5. Then we can go and see what happens to the precipitate which comes out in the reaction which is silver chloride. Silver is 108 plus chloride is 35.5 so that will give rise to 143.5 which is the molecular weight of silver chloride now we can say that uh, a sample of chromium chloride which has six water molecule contain n number of 35.5 gram of of ionizable chloride ions where n is number of chloride ions outside the the coordination sphere Okay, so that means if we have to find out how many chloride ions are present in 2.665 gram of chromium chloride 6 water, we can simply say that is going to be an equivalent of chloride ion which is present multiplied by 35.5 which is the weight of a single chloride atom multiplied by 2.665 gram of uh, the chromium chloride by which we started the reaction and that has to be divided by the molecular weight of chromium chloride 6 water molecule which is 266.5 so this is one part of the reaction let us now let us go to the second part of the reaction so 
The second part of the reaction is 143.5 gram of silver chloride contains how many grams of chloride ion so that is going to be equivalent to the weight of chloride ion which is 35.5 grams of chloride ion that means we can write we know that we obtain a precipitate of 2.87 gram of silver chloride so that will contain how many that will be very simple take weight of one chloride atom which is 35.5 multiply it by weight of silver chloride divided by the compound or the precipitate which we obtain which is 2.87 gram so now we have two reaction the first one you can call it number one the second one you can call it number two and now it is the time to relate these two parts together so that will be n multiplied by 35.5 multiplied by 2.665 divided by 266.5 this is one part of the reaction which was relating chromium chloride as a whole this will be exactly equivalent to amount of silver chloride which was obtained in the reaction which is 135.5 multiplied by 143.5 divided by the amount of silver chloride which was obtained which is 2.87 gram so when you solve this equation you have to find out what is the amount of n or what is the number of n and interestingly this comes out to be from this calculation 1.999 which is equivalent to 2 that means now we are able to write down the actual formula of the complex which is going to be chromium H2O whole 5 one chloride atom which is present in this complex or uh, which is coordinated and the one which we obtained is how many chloride ions were actually present outside the coordination sphere and that's what we calculated that outside the coordination sphere two chloride ions were present obviously we started with this formula with six water molecule so there has to be last water molecule which is present as lattice water molecule so this is what is going to be the uh, overall finding from this uh, uh, um, question and what is important then we can actually calculate how many chloride ions are present inside the uh, uh, complex and how many chloride ions are present outside the complex so this is what is the answer ionization isomerism it is shown by the compounds having the same empirical formula but they give different ions in the solution although they have the same composition this type of isomerism occurs when the counter ion of the complex is also a potential ligand for example pentaamine bromido cobalt 3 sulfate is red violet in color and in solution gives a precipitate with barium chloride confirming the presence of sulfate ion while pentaamine sulfate cobalt 3 bromide 
is red in color and tests negative for sulfate ion in solution but instead gives a yellow precipitate of AgBr with silver nitrate. So now we go to the next uh, type of isomerism which is number 4 and this isomerism is hydrate isomerism. So this type of isomerism is shown by the complexes in which there is a difference between the number of solvent molecules inside that means the inner sphere as well as outside that means the outer sphere of a coordination complex. Let us take this example of a, a chromium compound. So this chromium compound has three different isomeric form. One form is green in color, the second form is blue green in color and the third form is violet in color. What is interesting all these three isomers are in an interconvertible from one isomeric form to the other isomeric form after certain chemical reaction. So if we start from the green crystals, so the structure of the green crystal is when the chromium ion is surrounded by four water molecule and two chloride atoms which are coordinated. One chloride atom is outside the coordination sphere and dot two water molecule. Dot two water molecule means two outer sphere water molecule or lattice water molecule. How to obtain this compound? This compound can be obtained from concentrated hydrochloric solution and this compound comes out to be as green crystals. Now when you dissolve these green crystals in water, we get a different or the second form of the isomeric form which is bluish green in color. What is the structure of this compound of these bluish green crystals? In this compound, the chromium ion is surrounded by 5 water molecule, 1 chloride atom and 2 chloride atoms are outside the coordination sphere. That means these are the complex uh, anions and dot one water molecule. So we can see moving from green crystals or green isomeric form to bluish green isomeric form, the, pro uh, the proportion of the chloride atoms as well as the water molecule which are present inside and outside the coordination sphere varies. When we uh, take the second isomeric form that means uh, this uh, blue green isomeric form and if we heat then what actually happens it changes to the third isomeric form which is violet in color. And what is the structure of third isomeric form? In this compound chromium ion is surrounded by six water molecule and all three chloride atoms are outside the coordination sphere. So now we can actually relate all three isomeric form. So in the first isomeric form there are dot two water molecule that means two outer sphere water molecule. In the second isomeric form there is dot one water molecule that means there is only one water molecule outside the coordination sphere and the last uh, isomeric form which is violet in color we do not see any water molecule outside the coordination sphere that means all the water molecules are coordinated. So this is a, an interesting example in which the variation in the outer sphere and the inner sphere water molecule can change the color of the compound. Uh, as we have just uh, uh, visualized the first compound is green in color, the second one is uh, blue green in color and the third compound is violet in color. In case of solvate or hydrate isomerism, the isomers have the same composition but differ with respect to the number of solvate molecules inside as well as outside the coordination sphere. The best known example of solvate isomerism is chromium chloride which may contain 4, 5 or 6 coordinator water molecules. For example, tetraequa dichlorochromium 3 chloride dihydrate which gives dark green crystals and these are obtained from HCl solution. When complex 1 is dissolved in water converts into pentaequa chloro chromium 3 chloride monohydrate which is blue green in color. Complex 2 on heating converts to hexaequa chromium 3 chloride which is violet in color. These isomers have very different chemical properties and on reaction with AgNO3 test for chloride ions would find 1, 2 and 3 chloride ions in the solution respectively.
Now we go to the coordination position isomerism. That means in this isomerism, uh, normally this type of isomerism is observed in bridged polynuclear complexes where interchange of ligands takes place between two different metal centers. Now let us take one example and then I can explain what is the importance of coordination position isomer. So let us take an example of uh, a cobalt dimer. So cobalt is uh, uh, in the dimeric form that means two cobalt ions are bridging by one NH group and by one OH group. Additionally, uh, the cobalt ions are coordinated by certain number of amine ligands. For example, the first cobalt ion is surrounded by uh, three amine ligands, ammonia ligand and the fourth ligand is chloride. The second cobalt ion on the other side of the bridge is again surrounded by three ammonia ligand or the amine ligand and one chloride ion. Now what actually happens if you take this compound and if you think about the coordination position isomerism then we can easily visualize when some of the ligand change their position from one isomeric form to the second isomeric form. So the second isomeric form again have the cobalt ion two of them which are bridged by one NH group and one OH group that the difference is the first cobalt ion has four amine ligand. Both the chloride ligands are, are now coordinated to the second cobalt ion. So the second cobalt ion while it is bridged by the identical one NH and one OH group but it is coordinated by two amine ligand and two chloride ligand. So that means these two compounds which you can see uh, at the background both these compounds are isomeric in nature where there is a difference in the position of uh, one or different type of ligands from one isomer to, the, to that of second isomer. Coordination position isomerism. This type of isomerism is observed in bridged polynuclear complexes. Interchange of ligands take place between the two different metal centers. It is similar to coordination isomerism. Notice that a bridged binuclear cobalt 3 complex as shown here, two different isomers can be generated by the exchange of ammonia and chloride ligands between the two cobalt 3 centers of the complex. Let us try to understand the solution for the example just considered. A. Cobalt NH3,4, NO2,2, NO2. In this complex, Cobalt 3, NH3,4, NO2,2 makes cation part and NO2 come as counter anion thus makes two ions in total. B. In this cobalt 3 NH3 5 NO2 2 makes one cation and two nitro ligand come as counter anions thus make three ions in total. C cobalt 3 NH3 6 make one cation and three nitro ligands come as counter anions thus make four ions in total. Here is another solved example. We will determine the formulas for the all possible coordination isomers for the compound cobalt NH3-6 chromium NO2-6. There are four isomers possible by the exchange of NH3 and NO2 ligand displayed here. The compound cobalt NH3-3 NO23, chromium NO23, NH33 is also possible. However, plus 3 is the most common oxidation state for chromium and cobalt. So, no charges would be present. So, therefore, no interaction between the two. So, they will act as neutral complexes. In this module, we discussed isomerism in coordination complexes. In general, 
two types of isomerism are possible in coordination complexes constitutional isomerism and stereoisomerism constitutional isomerism is further subdivided into seven types coordination isomerism polymerization isomerism ionization isomerism hydrate isomerism coordination position isomerism linkage isomerism and ligand isomerism stereoisomerism is further subdivided into two types geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism constitutional isomers have very different physical and chemical properties